view raw button over here, it should download your fat key file. So I'm just going to take this file and just going to paste this in our pandas directory here. So I just need you to have this parquet file with you so that we can uh, uh, read this to begin with. That's all I need you to have. Once you have this, we can take a look at uh, understanding and uh, learning how to read parquet files. Yeah. Uh, let me know if you're able to download it for now. We can go ahead with the next step right away. Right, uh, so hopefully you have access to this, which means uh, we can go ahead, right? So yeah, let's go ahead. Now, uh, moving along, I've just introduced you to Pandas to begin with, but just know Pandas is not the only package to perform a lot of these things. You have Polars, you have uh, PyArrow, you have a lot of different packages, to be honest. Um, so Polars is um, another package that has that you have which work for Rust as well as Python. And uh, they say that Polas is much faster than Pandas, much, much faster than Pandas. Of course, Pandas has also improved itself by looking at Polas to make it fast. But these guys have some older benchmark that they say uh, they're much faster than all the other ones comparatively. And this is not the latest. Uh, this is slightly older. Just for your reference, they're using Pandas 2.0.1 here. Current Pandas version uh, is much newer than 2.0.1. For reference, it's 2.1.2 rather. So just for our reference. But you can take a look at them. You can see how they how fast they work. You can see um, how they're utilized. The only difference, if you really want to go learn, let's say Polars, for instance, is that in Polars, only a few um, things are different compared to Pandas. Most of the things in Polars are very similar to Pandas. You have the same things called series. You have the same things called uh, uh, data frame. Everything is same. So if you know Pandas, you can easily work over Polars. It's not difficult at all. You have exactly the same functions. Just a few functions here or there will be different, very few functions, but most of them are the same. So it's very easy to learn Polars if you know Pandas. So if you want to take a look at other libraries that can perform data analytics and you're wondering, uh, hey, there are too many. I want to try out a few things and I want to see which one works how or which one works better. Uh, you can compare and take a look at them and see which one works in what sort of place. So that's one thing that you have. Apart from Polars, there's one more thing called PyArrow. PyArrow is available specifically, again, for Python, where you can, again, perform the same kind of operations. Particularly, PyArrow is, again, developed by Apache because Apache has Parquet files as well. So you use PyArrow to read Parquet files and work around them just for our reference. Um, so to read Parquet files with PyArrow, you can do that. To read Parquet files with Pandas and work on top of Pandas also you can. So these are just different libraries and most of them work on the same thing, to be honest. Most of them work on the same thing. It's just that you have some additional functionalities within each of these library if you want to take a look at it. So if you want to compare, take a look at it, get to know these better, I would highly suggest you to take a look at Pandas, Polars, PyArrow. These three are really good um, libraries to perform data analytics if you want to work on it. But anyway, uh, let's get back to our current case on how to read a parquet file. This is the parquet file that we have. You won't be able to read it as a text file because it's, of course, not a text content. It has its own... Uh, um, compressed 
and different format. So if you want to read it, let's take pandas dot read. In read, you have a packet file over here. And in this packet file, you can provide the name that is user data one dot packet. If you run this, let's see what has happened. Oh yeah, it says uh, missing optional dependency pi arrow and missing optional dependency fast parquet. So the idea here is that uh, pandas uses pi arrow and fast parquet in order to read a uh, parquet files because uh, let's face it, the default thing about parquet is to use pi arrow. So if you have pi arrow, pandas is going to use it in order to read this parquet file. You don't have to use pi arrow by yourself. Pandas will do it internally just for our reference. So let's install. So there we go. Um, these should be good enough. Let's try it out. So it might be a small amount of time for us to install these packages and we should be able to work around it. Oh, it has taken a much longer time than we expect. Um, so we try stopping it and retrying it. We'll see if this works out. If not, I'll just um, restart the kernel and try this out once. Or of course, to avoid it, you can just install uh, right here. Let me just do that quickly. So in order to save time. So we already have cached by arrow. It's just, it probably has a lot of dependencies by itself, which is taking more time. I guess this is where it's taking up time that we get to see this, but uh, yeah, um, let's just um, wait and uh, we'll see if it's um, something that's taking a lot of time. We can um, at least try this after the uh, lunch hour time where uh, we can just, where, or in other words, where I can just walk through it and. Uh, um, we can see this after the lunch hour, perhaps. So that's basically the idea of how we use PATK files. It's similar to your Excel files, just that it is optimized for various other reasons, like utilizing it over uh, Hadoop and HDFS and so on. So we'll be, uh, meanwhile, let's go ahead and take a look at the next part. Now, uh, the next part of this, what we're gonna work on is, uh, um, SQL connectivity. Now, before we start with SQL connections, I have one, I think, uh, I hope nothing has crashed. I hope you're all able to hear me properly because I know we faced this issue yesterday. I just wanna make sure we don't, okay, all right, all good, all good. Thanks a lot for letting me know. So probably, um, yeah, this is taking a lot of time for some reason. I'll just figure this out later on um and check into that so please don't worry about it it really should not take this much time to begin with so i'll, I'll just check it out but we at least have an idea to begin with anyway moving along um let's go on to learning database connectivity now first and foremost the most important thing we need to know about database connectivities one single rule to learn please do not ever connect to a production database please don't ever 
that. If your company has a database, please don't ever connect to that to learn. Why I'm stating this is you might insert some rows that shouldn't go there. That is somewhat fine because you can delete them later on. But the worst case, you can delete something within the database. You can just perform some delete operation without a where clause because we are not, uh, we haven't looked into Python based SQL connection, though we might be good at SQL directly. This will mess up a lot of things within the database. Uh, so one very important thing that I would highly suggest is when learning SQL with Python or SQL connections with Python, it could be MySQL or PostgreSQL or whatever it might be. Please do not directly start with a production database. Please start with uh, just um, a database that you have for yourself or just a MySQL database that you get from the web where they provide a free um, database for you to use with your account. Any of these is fine, but please don't try with a production database unless you're sure that your code needs to go to the production server. Just something I want to point out um, because you might have seen a lot of memes and a lot of things where um, there's like I interned on day one and I deleted the production database. Will I still have my job? Question mark. So yeah, um, these sort of things we get to see a lot. Uh, so please do not do that as a warning and a request. Now with that idea, let's move ahead and start to work on um, SQL connection with Python. Now to begin with that, uh, you need to first install a particular package. I'll probably work on this later on. I'll just take a look into that. Maybe it's something related to my dependency wheels that are um, not proper. I'll just check it out later ahead. Anyway, let's uh, create a new folder to begin with. Let's call it SQL connection. I'm just going to close this for now. Uh, I'll just create a new file. Uh, again, to begin with, we'll start with a um, Python file itself here. Let's call this SQL.py and let's begin. Now, first thing that we need to know, uh, whenever you have SQL, you need to, uh, whenever you connect to any database, now, uh, just for our reference, SQL can appear in multiple forms, as we know. You have SQLite 3, you have SQLite. You have SQL, um, particularly with uh, uh, my SQL connection. You have PostgreSQL. There are so many variants of it. There are a lot of different variants of it. So just know which one you're working on so that you might have some slightly different things. SQLite are for mobile devices and they're optimized for storage and efficiency. MySQL and PostgreSQL are production ready for different purposes. So yeah, whatever you're connecting with, please note which one you're connecting with so you can work around it accordingly. Anyway, uh, let's connect with MySQL in our case. So I'm gonna use the appropriate package for this. So to connect to MySQL, you just have to use pip install, MySQL connector Python. This is the official package that is provided by MySQL, my, um, by the organization Microsoft for this purpose. So you can take a look at this. Um, you get to see MySQL connector Python developer guide. This is the official, uh, let's say, package that is provided in order to work on it. So just for your reference, this is the one that you have. Um, installation, the same thing as we just went through. pip install MySQL connector Python. Just do this. You should be able to install your package in order to connect to SQL databases. Now, uh, once you have done this, you can then go ahead and um, start working on anything. So I've just cleared the SQL database that I have locally, which I've used for some projects in prior. 
So you're going to see it as a new database, which is going to be um, something we're going to start to work with. Uh, it'll only have the default databases that it'll come up with. That is uh, um, something like sample or some stuff like that. So let's start with that. Let's import a MySQL connector and uh, start working on it. So you just have to import MySQL dot connector. If you're able to run this file, that means Oh, sorry. Oh, I have named it as 06, hence the mistake. It should be the next in the series. Let's name it appropriately. Right. So once you run this, if you didn't get any error at all, that means your MySQL connector is installed and you are able to access it. So yeah, um, that's basically all that we need to know to begin with. So we're gonna perform some basic and simple operations like connecting to MySQL and then performing some operations like let's say creating a database, um, adding content to the database, executing some SQL queries, um, close the connections, and then we're gonna try to see um, how we can work around and implement it elsewhere along with us as well. Now, uh, before we go ahead and start to work on this specifically, I have a couple of queries that I would like to ask. Um, again, so that we get to know and we get to understand where we are at in this case. On a scale of one to five, um, how well are we with the SQL? This would help me to make sure that uh, um, I get to know we can directly work around with Python's part of it more and not worry about SQL connections more. But that's pretty awesome. That's fantastic. <laughs> so five is pretty awesome. So that should be fairly good enough for us to directly connect ahead and uh, work through. So I don't think I have to explain about uh, why we shouldn't connect this to um, production to begin with on, on the first case. So you're well aware of this. So yeah, that's fantastic. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, uh, I, I believe this is something that you do on a regular basis in your work where you get to access this database and work on it. It's just that you haven't done it with Python. Um, I presume that is the case. So yeah, with that, uh, it's quite awesome in that case. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. Now, let's import mysql.connector. You can either import mysql.connector or specifically from mysql.connector, you can import a couple of things like uh, um, connect and some, oh, I'm so sorry import connect and a few other functions. But uh, in my case, I'm just gonna use import MySQL connector as SQL. This is what I'm gonna do. So let's begin. The first step is to connect to our database. Now, or connect to our, um, yeah, any database, let's start with that. Or connect to at least our server, our MySQL server, where all the databases are hosted. So let's first connect to our server and then work around. Now, you already know that when we work on connecting to databases or connecting to servers, uh, we will have to generally um, use a username and a password to connect to it. And we will have, um, apart from these credentials, a server's IP or somewhere where it's available that we get to connect. So what I'm going to do here is we'll, again, all of these will put within try except block so that um, we get to know Yeah, so the main purpose is that we get to know uh, if any exception occurs, uh, what is that exception and what um, is the scenario where we failed, we get to know all of these to begin with. So that's the whole purpose. So let's connect something. We're just gonna 
connect and print whether our connection is working or not that's all we need to do so the basic thing we are going to do always is deal with exceptions because you never know what might happen your username or password might be wrong your connection might not happen because the server is not accessible there are so many different things that might happen hence we do this now other thing you should always close the connection after you have accessed databases whenever connections are left open with databases it leads to a lot of performance problems because these connections are open database keeps listening to these connections and so on so there are a lot of things that you can do um, to make sure that you close connection there is we open a connection and close it later but for our current purpose we'll use with always remember when we use with um, again i'll just share this with context manager python so um yeah there we go with is a context manager within python what it essentially does is it manages whatever variable you create here so that that connection is closed by the end by default it doesn't let it be open so uh, by default when you open a connection you need to close it manually which we know Uh, here on the other hand you don't need to do that so that's something we know already but i hadn't explained that it's a context manager so i'm just working through that with is a context manager that we have right now let's go ahead and connect with let's start a connection sql dot um, remember i'm just importing this as sql sql dot connect in lower case we're going to perform a connection so this is the function that will create or get a mysql connection object it will open a connection to a server and return a connection object with that connection object you can do whatever you want again it says when any connection pooling arguments are given in that case whatever previously is available as a pooled connection it will return that only so this is one thing that uh, we need to look at in terms of connection pooling which we haven't learned but uh, yeah i'll walk through these probably later on for now uh, let's just take a look at this to begin with so first things first to connect you need okay they haven't specified anything i guess okay they haven't specified it in uh, this but yeah since we know what is to be what is required to be connected let's go ahead so the first thing to connect is host then you have username then you have password these are the three things that are needed to connect now only for our purpose only because we are doing this locally in let's say my pc i can do this however when you do this elsewhere when you perform this operation later on please don't do what i'm doing because you're never supposed to hard code username and password within a connection your username should always be stored separately in a credentials.py file like we had and your password as well but uh, yeah prior to actually doing this so that you also get to know this we have something called environment variables environment variables are something you can set within um any operating system so it's something that we can set in any kind of operating system that you have and um, these environment variables will help you keep some information within your system that people cannot see Uh, that others cannot see even if they get this code i'll just walk you through this for example uh, for a simple scenario whenever you go for uh, let's say uh, properties of my computer i'll just walk through this so that uh, um, this helps us understand it better whenever you go to my computer properties for instance um, you will have okay, it's been a while that i've Use this particularly. Um, 
let's just walk through this. I'm sure I'll be able to find this. Yeah, there we go. Environment variables. Perfect. So you will be directly able to search and get environment variables. These are the variables that you have within your PC. You can add your own environment variable if you want. For example, if I want to add my own environment variable, I can do that either in the terminal, that is the command prompt, or I can do it here as well. So I'll just show you how to add one environment variable and use it in our code, and then I'm going to delete it. So I'll just set x. Set x is to set an environment variable. I'll call this as SQL underscore password. This is going to be the environment variable I want to set, and I will save the value as password. Done. Once you do this, success. It's a specified value was saved. Uh, so that means I should have it here now. Let me just go to environment variables again. There you go. You have SQL password as an environment variable, and you get the value of it, which is password. And I'll set one more thing. Set x SQL username as user. That's it. This is also done. So we have two new variables that we have set SQL password and SQL username that are available here. Now, even if you share this code to others, share your code to others, these are not visible to anybody. These are visible only to you. How do I get these environment variables into code? And I'll, I'll just point this out. In reality, in real world, every single application that is there in the real world has all secrets, has all kind of credentials stored in environment variables separately. And your code will take from it so that no environment variable or sorry, no username or password, no nothing is available in code hard coded at all. It's a common thing that we follow. So just something I wanted to show you so that we can work on it. So I'm just going to comment this out before we go ahead with this. I'll just import OS and I'll just write here print of OS dot environ dot get. So just take a look at this. OS dot environ dot get is a function that will retrieve an environment variable. The environment variable I want to retrieve is called SQL username. So let's get the SQL username and print it. So once you run this code, yeah, once you run this code, uh, it currently prints none, probably because for, for some reason it's not able to access it. Okay, for some reason it's not able to access it, but I'll probably check that out up next why it's not able to access it because we have just created a variable called SQL username and uh, we have a value for it called user. Um, I'll just check if there's a permission issue or why is it that we are unable to access, but this is how you basically get to access, let's say, an environment variable and get its value. And that value will go to username and password here. That is what we're going to do in our case. But uh, prior to that, again, as requested, we have our uh, lunch time now. So let's do one thing. Let's go ahead for our lunch break now. We'll uh, depart now. And we'll join back by, I guess it's 12, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, so let's join back by 1 p.m. Oh, yeah, the Google Drive link. Sure, I'll share it. And uh, prior to that, to make sure you have the latest content, I'll just uh, delete these and update the latest content within the next minute or so. Uh, but yeah, before that, I'll just have this shared. I'm not sure which files I have modified since yesterday, so I'm just going to delete everything and I'm just going to update everything. Right, you will be able to access it here. All right, so it will be uploaded shortly. So with that, let's go ahead for our break and uh, yeah, we'll join back in an hour and continue. So yeah, thank you guys.